Hey, this is BJ. Thanks for listening to our show's podcast. If you're a fan of all things geeky, you should check out my other podcast, BJ Shea's Geek Nation. We have new episodes every day, and you can check it out at BJGeekNation.com. Your home is going into foreclosure, and you feel like a financial wreck. You don't know where to turn for accurate information. I'm bankruptcy attorney Travis Gagné. Let's talk about some legal options. If we work quickly, we can propose a plan to save your home, modify the loan, or in many cases, even eliminate your second mortgage. The consultation is free. I've helped hundreds of people just like you make informed decisions about whether to save their home or exit it on a reasonable, organized timeline. The chapter you choose sets the tone for the next chapter of your life. Please contact me today at ChooseTheRightChapter.com. That's ChooseTheRightChapter.com. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle, presenting Live Day on Tuesday, November 20th at the Snoqualmie Casino. It's our show. It's the men's room, completely live. And for the second year in a row, we're asking you to come join us. Be part of the studio audience. It's a live studio audience, and everything we do will be live. Sound effects, commercials, music, nothing is pre-recorded. Normally, Steve is pre-recorded for yes. every show, but he will be there live. I'm lip syncing right now. Yeah. Sometimes the thing stutters. I can't help it. Listen, Fab. <laughs> Blame it on the rain. That's what it's about. But it's going to be fun, man. Craig Gass is going to be joining us. Some of the yeah. best uh, local bands in Seattle are going to be not only playing some of their music live on Live Day, but also some of your favorite KISW songs and a lot of uh, audience interaction. So you get to be a part of the show, Bob, taking part in Facebook drama. Yeah. Big Migs. Yeah. We're going to have a blast. And uh, you want tickets? Yeah, we got them. Two, two different types, man. We've got uh, general admission or... The premium package where you get to spend time with Danny V. And the rest of us, of course. Yeah. In his pajamas. In his pajamas. You want more info? You got it. KISW.com. Let's play Beat Mix. It's time to play the game. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, David. Yeah, that good old Friday Junior. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> Love it. Let's get to our contestant today. We got Brian in Linwood. Brian, are you there, sir? Mm, yes, I am. How are you guys doing today? Doing great. And I think you're going to be doing great, too, because what's he playing for today, Steve? You want to know where the beef is? It's oh, right here. That's yeah. right. Kiss well, tickets, now. baby. <laughs> Kiss is going to be over at the Tacoma Dome on February 2nd. Yes. Go to KISW.com. For all the details, you want to see Kiss, get, you get your tickets to go on sale tomorrow at 10 a.m. through Ticketmaster.com. Hopefully you saw them on James Corden last night. They crushed it. Really? It sounded great. I think they did. I was going to shout out loud. It sounded really good. Uh, and I'm getting more and more pumped because I was talking to my brother. And yes. he's going to fly in to see Kiss with me for the final show coming all the way from Saudi Arabia. Whoa! That's right. Oh. Fighting for our country wow. and then fighting for the opportunity to rock. <laughs> <laughs> so that I'm actually is so really cool. Money. Huh? huh? So- <laughs> Sorry, guys. I oh. said I've spent so much money this year. I literally need these free tickets. <laughs> All right. Well, I feel you, man. I feel you. Brian, hopefully you can beat Steve. All right. All right let's see. All right, Steve. Get out of here. For those playing at home, Brian will have 60 seconds to answer 10 questions. Brian, you can pass all you want, but you will only get three guesses per question. Are you ready? Let's lick it up. (laughs) Ben and Jerry's ice cream, Cherry Garcia, is named in honor of what band's lead guitarist? Jerry Garcia? No. I don't know. Pass. What future state was bought from Russia for just over $7 million? What state? Yeah, pass. Pepsi Twist was a Pepsi flavored with what? Lime? No. Lemon? Yes. What South American country hosted the 2016 Summer Olympics? Brazil? Yes. What two dogs are bred to make a puggle? Poodle and a beagle. No. Puggle? Pass. What is the technical term for the voice box found in mammals? Uh, 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 pass. Kate Blanchett received an Oscar nomination in t- 2008 for portraying what male musician? I have no idea who the hell that is. Pass. Which quarterback led the Baltimore Ravens to victory in Super Bowl 47? He's not going to do that. Nah, man, I don't watch football. I don't know that either. Well, uh... 
Brian. Brian, uh, save deuce. your money, you drop the deuce. Yeah. Start saving up. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, yeah, Brian. Yeah. Well, well, I spent all my money on Red Fest, painting in the grass, layer nice. two times. But apparently not on an education, Brian. Oh! That's, no. that's, yeah, that's kind of what you... Give me credit, though. I have 22, so a lot of this stuff, no, I don't. Yeah. yeah. Kind of out of that age range I there, suppose. I suppose. I mean, I mean, what can I tell you, brother? You yeah. got to know something. You kind of didn't know a lot about anything. <laughs> Jeez. Walked into a tough crowd. Well, yeah. Again, you know, I mean, well, here's the thing. He's kind of like trying to get the free tickets anyway, but it's like you got to kind of earn them, right? Oh. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He's kind of going, I bought this, I bought that, I bought this, I should get this. And, oh, oh, no. I'm not smoothing you guys over. Don't worry. All right. All right. I mean, he did well, buy Red Fest and he bought Pain in the Grass, which is, I mean, is our stuff. I don't know. Maybe Two not. times going to Slayer. That's pretty badass. Should I feel bad or should I be writing my assessment? You should be writing your assessment. <laughs> He's just bragging about spending all this money. Yeah. 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 These are kiss tickets. Yeah. So you and gotta be good at beat yeah. Migs to get these tickets. Yeah, and he wasn't. Yeah. I mean, no, he's a great guy. Yeah, yeah. Great personality. Uh, Steve, are you ready? Yeah! <laughs> ben and Jerry's ice cream, Cherry Garcia, is named in honor of what band's lead guitarist? Uh, the Grateful Dead. Yes! What future state was bought from Russia for just over $7 million? Alaska. Yes! Pepsi Twist. Was Pepsi flavored with what? Lime. No. Lemon. Yes! Yes. What South American country hosted the 2016 Summer Olympics? Uh, uh, Spain. No. Jeez. Mexico. No. South America. No. What two dogs are bred to make a puggle? A poodle and a pug. No. A pug and a labradoodle. No. A pass. What is, what, the a is. what is the technical term? A pug and a beetle. A beetle? Yes. No. Beagle. No. Yes. yes. <laughs> well, yes, but no. What is the technical term for the voice wow. box found in mammals? Larynx. Yes. Kate Blanchett received an Oscar nomination in 2008 for portraying what male musician? David Bowie. No. Oh. Um, Freddie Mercury. No. Another good um, James Hetfield. No. <laughs> Which quarterback led the Baltimore Ravens to victory in Super Bowl 47? Joe Flacco. Yes, and Steve, you win. Whew. Five to two. Oh. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean. All I do is. Oh, wrong one. Yeah, you did not. You did that one. Halfway there. <laughs> wrong one. You had another. You went from one win song to another. I mean, they both worked. That's his perfect 10 song. Yeah. Oh. And you did not get that perfect 10. No, not at all. No. No. He was halfway there. Living on that prayer. <laughs> And yes, it was a pug and a beagle. Beagle. Yeah. Beagle. Yeah. Uh, the South American country hosted uh, the 2016 Summer Olympics. That was one of the few that Brian got correct. Brazil. 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 Uh, Kate Blanchett played which male musician? Do you know this, Danny? Because I, you, 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 I think you do. No, I don't. It's, uh, oh, it's the one with the curly hair. Mm-hmm. I just oh, saw a picture. Weird Al. No, no. not Weird Al. Kenny G. <laughs> I don't know this. How do I not know that Kate Blanchett did this? It was oh. a movie that... Ice Cube. Yes, it was Easy Ice Cube. Yeah, 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 there you go. It was the multiple actors played this role. Bob Dylan. Yes. That one, yes. Exactly. Oh, sure was. yeah. Kate Blanchett's yeah. hella, right? From Thor? Uh, yes. Oh, wow. I was, you know, I was thinking Kate Winslet, too. That's why I was confused. No. I was like, what the hell did Kate Winslet ever do anything? But yeah, that movie sounds so dumb. Yeah. I'm sure it's great. I'm it, sure it's critically acclaimed. It was. I mean, she got an Oscar nom, so. She looks good. I mean, she did a great job yeah. looking like him. She really does, actually, in that picture. You're absolutely right. The but, whole concept just sounds stupid. Yeah, I had no desire to watch guy. it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but congratulations, Steve. You won with five correct. That means call number five. You're checking out Kiss. Kiss. Call number five of the Tacoma Dome. That's where Kiss is going, and they're going to be there uh, next February year. 2nd. Yeah. Yep. So Tickets go on sale tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Call number five. You get them now. 206-421-ROCK. Call number five. 206-421-ROCK. Steve, I don't know if you heard this, but the uh, Red Sox are World Series champions. I don't oh, know if you heard No, I had no idea. I thought they didn't even make the playoffs. Yeah. I actually watched the parade yesterday, and it's the last thing. I mean, now it's going to get down to they're not going to talk about it a whole lot anymore. But it was the last day they had the parade in Boston yesterday. How drunk were the players? Oh, the, the players for the most part were in good shape, though. Some of them, yeah, some of them were really drunk. And they had past players from past World Series uh, wins go on there since now they have four. Oh, that'd be so funny if like Bill Buckner shows up and whenever they toss him a beer, it goes through his legs on yeah. purpose. Yeah, again, you have to be a winner. And the, uh, Bill Buckner wasn't part of a winning team. I'm sure, he was if he was a member of the New York Mets. Uh, yeah, he, well, yes. some people think he was. Uh, but you so know, I no think, one was like super wasted. I think their Ortiz. Speeches? I feel like David. 
David Ortiz and Pedro Martinez, since they, they sure. were part of the past teams, they were doing like little salsa dancing and going crazy. And I feel like there might have been a couple of beverages for both of them. I feel like nobody does championship celebrations nearly as awesome as hockey players. I have to The agree. Washington Capitals, I think, are still celebrating their Stanley Cup win last year, and the season has already started up again. Mm-hmm. I say hockey players and Marshawn Lynch. Yeah. Because Marshawn, during that, that championship celebration for the Seahawks, and just crushing fireball, handing it out to fans as well. Yeah. That was awesome. I don't know now if uh, hockey players do this as much as like football and baseball players, but baseball especially, they bring their families. So to get trash with your little kids mm. there and with your daughters there that are like 15, probably not the example you want to set. I feel like there's a lot of younger players playing hockey or a single yeah. guy. So maybe that also uh, contributes to it. But I think some of them had their family. And TJ Oshi, who's from around here, still didn't stop him from putting his jersey over his head and drinking beer through his jersey. She's that, yeah. They, you know what? Good for them then, yeah. That's what I assumed. I assumed they didn't want to get too crazy because their family was around. But if you're saying they had their kids there for hockey celebrations. Yes. And now the fans themselves were getting a little crazy. Yeah, oh, somebody, no crap. Yeah, somebody thought that Alex Cora, the manager for the Red Sox, needed a beer. So he threw an open one at him, an open can of beer, and it actually hit the World Series trophy and dented it. No, it didn't. Yeah, they're classy, those Red Sox fans. That's hilarious. Yeah, uh, and people were trying to do that. I mean, a lot of people were throwing stuff at folks at the at floats, and, you know, regular oh, somebody folks... Somebody got injured by a flying beer can, too. Yeah, that's the problem. Regular folks don't understand that, you know, you're throwing projectiles at people that are not paying attention to you since there are, there are thousands and thousands of people that you're waving to. You're not going to see stuff coming from any direction, and, I mean, people would do that to us on stage when we were doing, like, you know, professional comedy things or something, and they didn't mean any harm. They're like, hey, here's a beverage. Right. And you're like, dude, I got bright lights in my face. You're basically throwing a beverage to a guy that can't see anything. I just saw the video. It looks like it like kind of knocked one of those little flag pendant things out. Yeah, dude. Yeah, it damaged the uh, World Series trophy. Because, I mean, you're, that's a whole can of beer. You know, and uh, Alex, yeah. he's looking around like, who the F just did that? And Mookie Betts, who was their star player, uh, was almost taken out by some beers. One of them was deflected by another quick-thinking uh, quick person on the boat. Otherwise, it would have got Mookie right in the skull. In all fairness, though, it looks like some of the players had their hands up hoping to catch the beer. So as much as you want to give the fan Oh, crap, really? See, I didn't realize oh, that. Oh, dude, watch what, when, when it shows. You'll see like guys putting their hands up as like, oh, I'm going to catch the beer. Oh, damn, dude. Uh, yeah, it's, that's, that's not smart either. Well, free wow. alcohol is free alcohol, BJ. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, Alex Cora, actually, the manager, was hit in the back with an open beer. He was not happy. He stared down the person who threw it and pointed them out. Like, yeah, they, they stopped the duck boat, apparently, and Alex was just there staring and pointing. I love one person texting and said, Brad Keselowski uh, from NASCAR, he did an interview where he won the NASCAR championship while holding a beer. Yeah. That's what you have to do. You have to have a drink in your hand so people will think that you don't need one. There you go. Yeah, that's the key. Yeah, can you know, stay classy, Boston. Man. It still bums me out that the weather was so freaking cold for when the Seahawks won the Super Bowl. Yeah, that was a beat. That was the most miserable yet awesome experience of my life. Being a part of the whole championship celebration and the parade and walking around and feeling the energy of the crowd. But all of us, by the time we got into CenturyLink Field... Especially the side that didn't have the sun beating on it. It was so cold. And it's not, I mean, granted, you know, a lot of people think, well, it was winter. What do you expect? But not here in Seattle. It never gets that cold. No. But it was just it was abnormally, brutally cold on the day of the damn celebration. What you should have done, gone out the night of the Super Bowl win, because we all went to downtown Seattle. And we walked like yeah. three miles. This is when people were climbing on everything yep, down. Yep. It was pretty fantastic. It wasn't yeah. that cold. And even if you were cold, it didn't matter because the Seahawks had just won. Pretty special time. Let's hope this year we get another one of those. Yay. That would Remember, be- Marshawn Lynch getting tossed fireball during the Hawks parade and drinking it on the hood. Yeah. That was great. That, look, that, that, was, a, that, that was a fun time. This year, man. Let's get ready. Let's plan that trip. It'll, look, you know, how, look, think about how sweet that will be. Because r- right now the Rams are looking like the team to beat in sure. the NFL. If the Seahawks just come out of nowhere and, you oh. know, and, and if, if, the, if the conference championship does go through L.A. and they go in there and can make that happen, I mean, that'll be an amazing season. I'll celebrate the championship parade shirtless if that happens. Yeah, I mean, I'll be so pumped. Because they, they started I'll off... paint my body blue. What was it? 0-6 yeah. counting the preseason? So, I mean, the season started <laughs> off just horribly. Let's count the preseason. Well, I'm just saying, no, you know, I, know. I mean, you know, it was just a day, you know, you as a fan, you're like, okay, we lost the first wow, we're 0-4 in the pre, and now we're 0-2, oh. you know, and then just, you know, everybody was ready to jump off the boat and it didn't look like we knew what the hell we were doing and, and if we can come back and get into that situation, man, that'll be a sweet season. 
All right, it is time for listeners on the loose. You pick the topic. You guide the show. 206-421-ROCK. Text us at 77999. Your calls, your texts at 917 on The Rock. BJ and Migs. Mornings on The Rock. 99.9 KISW. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. is listeners on the loose. You pick the topic, you guide the show. 206-421-ROCK. Text us at 77999. Whatever it is you want to talk about. Something new, something old, something borrowed, something blue. I don't care. You can talk about whatever you want to talk about. But Steve does have a rule. It's a simple rule, BJ, and that's to show some energy and bring it. Otherwise, get gone. And we have to say goodbye. Goodbye, old friend. 206-421-ROCK. Text us at 77999. Hi, the one that says, I have a question for you guys via text uh, for our listeners on the loose. I don't know much about radio, but what do you guys do during the commercial breaks and the music breaks? Besides using the restroom, I get this weird image of y'all sitting in the studio in awkward silence waiting to go back on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, kind of. Can sometimes. You guys, can you guys hear the music in the commercials? Uh, why do you guys wear headphones when you broadcast? It's kind of like, uh, first of all, it's great to have something in common with the texters because we know nothing about radio either. Yep, that's uh, true. We're still trying to learn it. It reminds me of like, I don't know, the old creepy movies or like sci-fi movies or whatever where like until somebody walked in the room, everybody froze and did they weren't alive, you know, almost like dolls. <laughs> like dolls don't come alive until like, you know, you need them to or when you come in. Oh, so we just stand here and don't even move. Yeah, we just <laughs> We're not even real people. Yeah, and then, when the, and then when it's time to come back on, we're, hey, we're back. Gosh, that's a good, I, I'm trying to think, a lot of times we end up congregating in the kitchen. Yeah. Especially when Vicky makes uh, nachos. Yeah, I made yeah. nachos today. It was fantastic. Sarah's been yelling at me all day because I've been eating them, and she knows I'm a little off my diet today. And, uh, you know, Halloween, is, well, Halloween and day after, we'll do that to you. You're just trying to prep and expand your stomach for Thanksgiving. Today. That's what it is, yes. yeah. That's it, yeah. A lot of times I'm also just reading up on whatever we're going to do next, getting ready for that. I uh, watch the Trailer Park Boys a lot. You do watch the Trailer Park Boys a ton during the commercial breaks. I'll watch a wrestling match that sometimes. Yeah. I ain't gonna lie. I will tell you this. It's fascinating. Um, I didn't realize it, but, you know, they tell you to keep yourself in good shape by doing something, you know, you know, surround yourself with positive stuff. And in this business, sometimes, you know, we have to read the news a lot and every bad story there is, you know, everything that shows up in my AP alerts is usually mm-hmm. bad. The Trailer Park Boys put a smile on my face and actually really helps my attitude. Yeah. It really, really does. I didn't realize the positive effect they would have when I've got, I'm only on season four, baby, so I've got so many more seasons to go. I'm going to be happy for a long time. Bubbles is our great philosopher of oh. our generation, if you ask me. Bubbles is the man. And sometimes just, you know, just chilling out, listening to the songs, too. I mean, yeah, there's that. Yeah, they just decompress, answering social media. Yeah. And why do we wear headphones? Because when we take phone calls, we can't hear somebody. Or if we play audio, we wouldn't be able to hear it. There'd be feedback. Yeah. That's why. If we put the speakers on and talked in the microphone, sometimes when you're at a show, you'll hear that. If the microphone's too close to speakers, you'll get feedback. That would happen on the radio. So, like Steve said, the whole room mute out and the only way we can hear is through the headphones because the headphones aren't loud enough to cause feedback through the microphones. And Jaden just texted and said I learned that Steve wears headphones because when he takes them off he swears like a sailor. That's yeah. very yes. true. Yeah. Yeah. The headphones are almost a psychological thing for me. Like let's just say there's been times I jumped on the men's room and they don't have headphones and so you're like oh no just jump on the mic. I'm like no I gotta go get some headphones because if I don't have headphones on I start thinking I'm in a comfort zone of being able to curse. Headphones go on. I know I shouldn't curse. Yeah, dude. It's a weird psychological thing. We all curse like sailors here. It's true. I was out and I said something really bad to somebody and luckily nobody else was around and I was in the kitchen. and I Because it was around people that I usually swear around. And you? I was like, oh. No way. Yeah, usually you spend the breaks making terrible songs about us. There is that, yes. But I was out in the kitchen and I was actually, I, I was being clever with a rhyme that rhymes with rock and like, oh, oh I had better dear. be careful with that word. And Rev spent most of the break trying to trick us into smelling his farts. Yeah, yeah a lot of times I'm like, hey, uh, smell like popcorn in here? Yeah. Or, hey, I have some uh, some some paperwork or some papers for you and you walk in, you're like, damn it! Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's Son why of I don't interact with Rev for that it reason. burns your nostril hairs. Speaking of the Rev, um, uh, somebody texted it wondering if anyone has tried Red Dead Redemption yet, number two, of course, uh, and I heard that the Rev already got it. Yes. yes, he did. So we were talking about it yesterday and I had that FOMO moment where I was just like, I need to get this. Everyone's posting their screen grabs and the gifts of the, of the game and I was like, I have to get this. And 
And for those that are playing along at home that don't use words to shorten other words, it fear, FOMO is fear of missing out. Yes. Yeah. Okay, back to you, Rev. Yeah, thank you very much. Right. I, I misunderstood <laughs> yesterday, so I'm, I want to find out why you did what you did. I didn't realize that, because I thought it was only available for one platform, but uh, but it's not. You can get it on Xbox and on PS. Yeah. Yes. So why did you then go buy the whole bundle if you already own a, an Xbox? Why'd you do that? Because uh, in my steampunk bar, I just put in a uh, 50-inch 4K television, and so... So I wanted the 4K experience. I have an Xbox. I have one of the original Xboxes, uh, Xbox Ones that do, doesn't have the 4K capabilities. Oh, and PS4 does. Yes, and they come. Oh. It comes in a bundle. You can get the oh. you can get the PlayStation Pro, uh, PlayStation 4 Pro, uh, with the Red Dead Redemption bundle. So I was like, well, instead of spending sixty dollars on a game, I might as well just spend four hundred dollars. Yeah, there and, you go. It's a fair markup. That's why that game. Yeah, I needed <laughs> I needed a Blu-ray player. For for the bar. Yeah. It and made perfect sense. You needed to see the horse's testicles shrivel in cold weather in 4K. Absolutely. Yeah. Makes and, sense. And if you didn't hear, I mean, the game <laughs> by Rockstar Games, the guys that are, bring you Grand Theft Auto, this game, Red Dead Redemption 2, has already made over $740 million. Yeah. It's only been, it's been out less than a week. Add $400 to that one, too. That's insanity, man. So, yeah, uh, because of Halloween, I was able to play it for about 10 minutes yesterday. And? And I love it. It does start off slow. It starts off like a movie. It starts off like the Hateful Eight. See, I love. See, this would. I love the cinematic scenes in games, and a lot of people don't. But I love. Oh, that. I always hit whatever button it is to skip, oh, unless it's it. wrestling, and then I enjoy the story. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love those scenes. Man. And so, yeah, the the whole story mode is getting you used to the controls because I've never had a PlayStation before, so I was just completely lost on the controls. But it helped me figure it out for a little bit, and so yeah, it was. It's beautiful, and I can't wait just to dive into it and basically ignore everything else. I know. Now, look, there are videos up, so I know I can't be the only one, but am I the only guy that you know of that I go to the YouTube channels just to watch all the cutscenes put together like a movie? No, I do that as games? well. I've I didn't even know that was a thing. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's the what? one thing I'll do for uh, all the Mortal Kombat games. Yeah. I, I don't want to spend the time actually playing them because I suck at fighters. Exactly. Fatality. But I'll watch all of the fatalities and they have all of them oh, online. Yeah. And that would be me growing up. I try to play Final Fantasy VIII, but I'd get too distracted, so I'd make my brother play and he'd yell at me from across the house like oh the cutscene's coming so I'd race down just to watch the cutscenes yeah now see some, somebody now makes movies out of them doing on YouTube That's hilarious yeah, yeah and I watch them, them because I'm like let me go see what's going on in the world of Halo because I can't play the damn game but I want to there's a lot of cool like cinematic moments I did that back in the day when they uh, first what one, one of the World of Warcraft expansions had a bunch of cutscenes and I, I put them out there for people so they could watch them they're making skillions on this free, yes, on, these, on these video games. Yeah. It's amazing. Well, and Red Dead Redemption 2 is another one. They're putting in money like from like essentially what you would put in for movies to for the production into these. Yeah, like, what was the budget? 80 mil? Yeah. Like sometimes it's even more than that. And it's absolutely wow. ridiculous. But you're wow. also making more money than some of the movies are making now. Most of the movies now. You're right. Dude. Here I am debating whether I should just buy the new WWE 2K game. Yeah, you should I think I'm going to have to now. You're going to yeah. have to, dude. I hear all this video games. It's going to be wanting to play some video games. And that's yeah. the only thing I play. Oh, that four, NHL. And 4K is so beautiful. I Dude, finally got yes. I got an Apple TV 4K for the new TV I got, and it's just gorgeous. I, I'm just so happy to watch, basically, their, the screen, you know, the burn screen thing that they do, whatever. I, I can't remember what the name of the thing, you know. Splash what, screen? That, whatever the screen is that rotates so that you don't burn your TV. Oh, okay, yeah. Like yeah. The screensaver or The screensaver. Thank you. That's yeah. the word. I <laughs> yeah, the screensaver is just so amazing. It's just like, oh, my God, it's so sharp and beautiful. Like, I, they show me a desert, and I see every grain of sand, and I'm loving yeah. it. Plus yeah. Plus, with the WWE. The game, my buddy AJ got to be, he's the voice of the player mode. So when you're playing the game and you, you hear that person talking like your character, that's him. AJ who? Uh, it's my buddy AJ Kirsch. He's oh, a I thought it was a football me. player that, that loves no, the wrestling. I was going to say, AJ Francis got to do he's that? He's a wrestler. He does stuff at Hood Slam in, in, oh, in nice. Oakland. And uh, he was a part of Tough Enough on the WWE, but then uh, he actually hurt himself, blew out his knee. He was doing the mocap, the, the motion capture. He blew out his knee motion capturing. He was doing the, uh, they hire somebody who's a good wrestler and they'll have them do the wrestling moves of the wrestlers that are in WWE 2K games. So that way they don't have to have the actual wrestlers show up to a studio and do their moves over and over again. So he does, like, let's just say he'll be doing John Cena's moves or yeah. something along the line, wear the whole suit. And apparently they are like, okay, we just get one more take of you doing, I think, like a power bomb. And he's like, okay, fine. Does it, blows his knee out. 
And that puts him, of course, on the sidelines has to get surgery. But, I mean, if you're going to blow your knee out, you might as well do it on the WWE's dime. Yeah. Because, thankfully, he was fully covered and they oh, took yeah. care of it all. That's and awesome. He had the best doctors. And then he auditioned for another thing and didn't know it was for the video game and found that he got the gig. And now he's the voice of the character that what you use when you play uh, the WWE game right now. Damn, dude. It's pretty awesome. Yeah, man. You just don't know what people are making money doing. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's amazing. I was like, that's pretty sweet that he had that opportunity. He was just on Stone, Stone Cold Steve Austin's podcast talking about all of it, too. Nice. Well, there you go. So uh, the, the Red Dead Redemption, Revs gives it a thumbs up. Two testicles frozen up. That's what he gave it. <laughs> and, wow. and now you get to enjoy it because Halloween is over. Yeah. And, well, I mean, I've got like life, I guess. I don't know. My yeah. poor wife. You're our man about town. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's going to go down a lot. Dude, Dude, it was impossible for us yesterday to do anything other than hand out candy. Dude, Not to rub it in on you, yeah. DJ, but... <laughs> you know, I, I watched a lot of shows. I watched the Red Sox parade. I, I, you know what? I got everything I wanted to get done because nobody came to my house. It took about two and a half, almost three hours to finish one episode of Lethal Weapon because we had to keep pausing it, going and giving candy. Yeah. No yeah. problem here, Steve. I no. watched all the TV I wanted. Yeah, it's a sad thing. Listeners on the loose, you pick the topic, you guide the show. 206 421 Rock, text us at 77999. You have more to say? Well, call us, text us, and we'll take them at 933 on the Rock. BJ and Migs, mornings on the Rock, 99.9 KISW. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. It's listeners on the loose. You pick the topic. You guide the show at 206-421-ROCK. You can also text us at 77999. Uh, somebody wanted to know, BJ, if you go to Philadelphia to get a good cheesesteak, I highly recommend going to Pat's or Gino's. Uh, or Pat's and Gino's. They're right across the street from each other. Uh, and I'd like to get your opinion when you get back from T-Wolf. Luckily, uh, everybody who ever knows anything about Philadelphia, that is, uh, it's amazing, the one consistent message. You you go to certain places, you go, hey, tell me about your city, tell me about this. I say Philadelphia, Pats and Geno's, it's the only thing anyone has ever said to me. It's like, you've got to go to both and see which cheesesteak is better in your eyes. So then you become like a part of what team? Like, are you team Pat? Are you yeah. team Geno's? A lot of folks seem to think you can't pe- go wrong either way. Team both. Yeah, I mean, they're like, look, you know, you might favor one over the other, but you're going to love them both. Luckily for us, they're not too far from the convention center, which is where we're going to be hanging out. We're going for the Penny Arcade Expo Unplugged, which is a huge board gaming expo put on by the PAX guys. That's so awesome. We're very excited because, you know, since it's a Seattle-based company, you know, we tell them, hey, we're thinking of taking our podcast out there and covering it out east. What do you think? And they're always really good by giving us press passes. And so we're, nice. uh, yeah, we're excited because we've never gone to one of these PAX Unplugged before. And it's, 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 a, it's, you know, outside of like Essen and Gen Con, PAX Unplugged might be one of the biggest board game conventions there are. I've always said that. So yeah. I'm glad that you're finally on board with I, what I, I've done. I know, I know you all, all you, I know you're like, you know what, Essen, so what? It's a European. Who cares? You know, it's over there. Who cares? Oh, well, big question, Steve. Did you win your costume contest? Oh. No. I really think you got robbed. I got robbed. I really do. Yeah, I, I, nobody's costume yeah, was as original. Yeah, I, I'm, I feel like the, the committee that uh, was making these decisions was biased. Clearly. Yeah. Yeah, we had a big costume contest here at work. We yeah. even had a runway. It was pretty awesome. We all walked yeah. down the runway. I walked down in my four-year-old version of myself, got a nice response. Everybody beforehand says, I don't even know why there's even a contest. You've won this. Of course. Everyone's pumping my tire. You know, I'm like, yeah, this is going to be great. Well, of course, I didn't even end up voting. I forgot. I, I had work to do, so I, I overheard it on the loud, the, the, the PA. Yeah. All right, we're announcing the winners, and the Ted Smith and I were talking, and he's just like, there's two other people I feel like you that have a shot at beating you. And those two people tied, and I, I didn't win. Oh, come they on. They were great costumes, though. Uh, you know what? One I, was playing the role of another coworker, and it was pretty damn funny. Yes. And I don't know what Byron was, but it was a really oh, awesome you, costume. Do you remember Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer? Oh, that's what He was Yukon Cornelius, which, yes. by the way... He did a great job. It was good. He uh, has, the, he has yeah. the mustache to do it, and he waxed it. And so the beard. It went, yeah, the and it went and straight beard. out. It, yeah, his, it was legit. His beard and mustache game is 100% just amazing. So I'm pretending I won the bronze. I don't even know if that's the case. But you did. Yeah. Right, yeah. yeah, and unfortunately... Like I couldn't, he didn't even vote for me. I couldn't no. vote for you either. You didn't vote for me? Peer pressure. You voted for your daughter. Of course. All right. <laughs> Because I couldn't lie to her. I wanted to vote for you. I thought yours was better than hers. But I knew if I didn't vote for her, I'd have to lie to her. See, that's the problem. I didn't even have the, the, I didn't even have the rallying support of my crew. I know. No, I you, felt horrible. But I, uh, you voted for me. No, I... Uh, you didn't vote for you. I don't feel too bad. I was going to vote for uh, JD? JB? JB? Yeah, that guy. 
<laughs> well, he was dressed as a princess. I thought yeah. that was him and his daughter. But you got to vote he for was yourself, a too. Yeah. Come on, what do you think? Do you think that the you know the president, when the president goes in, doesn't vote for himself? They always vote for themselves. Well, did you guys vote for my pumpkin, though? No. Um, I think I did vote for your pumpkin, Vicky. Yes. Oh, you didn't vote for Sarah's pumpkin? Oh, no. Sarah, well, <laughs> no, I had. I, I told Sarah, I said, look, I'm going to pick Vicky's pumpkin, but I'll pick your costume. I'm sorry. I thought JD's costume was the best. No. You didn't think JD's was? He had chucks on. He yeah. had a tutu. No, pink See, you, didn't, you didn't know and you come down Cornelius. the aisle with his daughter. Yeah, but if you if you <laughs> love Rudolph, adorable. I mean, look, they were cute, but I don't let cute factor judge the how good the costume looks. Cute, even without the daughter. Yeah, look, I love JD. He's a great dude, but Yukon Cornelius rocked the joint. I it mean, was. I wasn't going to let. Here's what people do in life, and they do it. They bring their little kids. When they bring their little kids, people give them the ah uh, vote, and yeah. I think they get more credit than they deserve for their costumes because the kid is there. <laughs> I agree. Yeah. And I'm not doing it. And, and then I'm, I'm, I'm a not. Purist. I'm not even close to winning the com- the building costume contest. Oh, you're and, done. I'm, I'm beating out all our coworkers. Yeah. So there, suck it. Did UConn <laughs> go down? If UConn went down, he's got to win. Nah, he's going down. I'll tell you. Oh yeah, you're gonna what? You think the building is gonna favor you over UConn? So far. Do you I'm not see awesome. how those girls, the two girls that took pictures of you, did you not see the disturbed look on their face at this uh, oh. this man in his forties dressed like he's a little coat? You kindergarten? said that, but when they did the group photo, yeah. Who did they flock to and make sure they were around? Oh, you think? This guy. I thought they were afraid and they just was hoping maybe if we did a picture. Look at the picture. The proof alone. is in the pudding, bro. All right, I don't know. They look scared to me. Do you like know why them. they liked me? Yeah. Because I stood up for them. From oh, the damn yeah. stupid donut thieves. Yeah. Oh. That was a big controversy. Somebody even says, what about the donut theft? Because I talked about it on the mega cast. Oh, dude. The donut Bro. thieves were. The, and they, you they know. They are the lowest of the low. And nobody else said something except I didn't for. notice. Cowboy Steve. I didn't notice until they were scrambling away. And then yeah. you told me they were making away with all the goods. I didn't notice, yeah, until Steve stood up for them. Oh, I noticed because I heard Steve's commentary the whole time on oh, these I two publicly ladies. shamed those ladies. It was fantastic. I heard, I heard you say, and they don't even have a costume? They don't have a costume when they're doing this? And I'm like, what is going on? Next thing I know, I see these women. And it's funny, these women scrambling away as if we didn't exist. And oh, Steve, they, they had their blinders on. So, yeah, they, we were down there. We entered, you had to enter the, the building contest for the costumes. And then they took a picture of you. And then they had donuts for everybody that, and what I would imagine were for people that entered the contest. Well, they had them behind them, so right. you really couldn't get to them until you finished. You, you basically had to fill out the entry blank. Yeah. But they were busy helping us taking pictures, and these two ladies, no costume, yeah, just swooped right in, grabbed the napkin. Not only did they grab one donut, not two. But all three different types of donuts. And look, I and know it's bolted. It's going to sound like a stereotype, but do you imagine every old lady that puts every bloody condiment in their pocketbook? Yeah. Yep. That's exactly what they look like. I thought, oh my God, these are the ones, these are like my mother in law. They just throw all the condiments in their pocketbook when they're at a restaurant. That's what these women reminded me of. And so I'm like, well, would you look at this? I, and yeah, and I'm he's saying there, it he's loud. play by play. And he's like, just like his father, Marv Albert, doing a great play by play. You took one donut. She took, she doesn't even have a costume. Now I go, oh, now she's taking two. <laughs> And, then, like, oh. and they even, it was like, they oh. were scurrying because it was like, this guy's about to bust our plan. I, and then in retrospect, I realized I should have got in front of them, pulled out my cowboy gun. Oh, yeah. Pointed oh. at them and said, freeze. Citizens arrest, Marshal. That's right. Should have done it. You're freeze. not stealing donuts <laughs> around this cowboy. That's right. <laughs> this is no cow poking cowboy situation. Who does that? Uh, I know. And... Not even a thank you either. That's the other thing. It's like you just grab and go like these people that are there don't even get any acknowledgement for at least doing what they do. You got to thank the building folks for, you know, taking their time and giving us a nice day. They didn't do that either. At least pretend that you have a costume. And fill out a form and say, "Oh, I'm I'm a I'm a low life bottom feeder, <laughs> a low life donut thief." <laughs> yeah. That's it. I would respect that. Yeah, I know, dude. I it, couldn't believe they did that. Humans are just. Sometimes you look at humans and go, "What is your issue?" You know, just just, just you can come out and even ask, "Hey, we don't have a costume. Do you mind if we have donuts?" Just just interact with humanity. What is wrong with that? Right. And that's why the people that worked that contest appreciated me. Not all heroes wear capes, BJ. I'll do it. But I they was, do wear jort overalls. I was impressed. I, I was impressed with you. And you were the only one saying anything. Danny, of course, what did he do? He said nothing. No, I didn't care. He, no, everybody yeah. was looking at me like, I can't believe you're saying something. And of I'm like, should well, say something. I'm like, this is crap. Dude, uh, dude I, uh, if, I did, if I'd have known what you'd have known, I would have been right there with you. I, at, I was not aware of it until your play-by-play happened and I saw them scurry away. At least ask and say thank you. 
They just yeah, walked no. in and yep. took them and kept going. And those girls that were in charge of everything were really very friendly and very nice. Yes. It's like, give them a thank you. Let them know that you care that they're here doing this, representing the building, which is trying to make your stay as a tenant nice while you're I couldn't believe work. that, man. I mean, they decorated our elevator, made it nice and spooky. I got to be in that elevator. I was stoked. Yeah, I took a selfie and everything. So that was my wife. And they gave us a big bowl of candy, too. That plus was a big bowl of candy, too, that everybody could have. Yeah. Humper says, no accountability anymore. No, I know. Bunch of trolls, Steve. That's who steals donuts. It's, again, if you just ask, I'm sure they would have said sure. I'm positive they would have said sure. But people don't do that. People just go, let me just steal and run and not acknowledge you. And, and, and you know, and keep your head down the whole time. I'm going to say this. I got, a, I got a message for both those ladies. Don't ever complain about the state of this country or the state of humanity because guess what? You show us why we're where we're at. You're contributing to the misery of life. You're doing it. And I have a message, too. I'm on to you. Oh, really? These eyes are on you, too. So you're on. on. Do we know what floor they're on? Oh, well, probably floor six. Dude, wouldn't that be great if or we just... Nine, made, I'm not sure. Let's watch them, what if we made a citizen's arrest? We put on some cop outfits and go up to their floor and just arrest them. So they were shocked that someone said something because people nowadays are so passive-aggressive to the hundredth degree. Yeah. That was true because like, I, I was surprised that they didn't even acknowledge Steve saying something like, oh, ha, oh, ha, we thought no. they were free, but that's they didn't totally, say no, anything. No, yeah, no that's, they kept their head down. That's total. Th- I mean, you know, you'll have that sometimes where somebody will slam you with a cart in a supermarket. They'll keep their head down and keep moving. There's nothing said. And it's like, dude, not even a, I'm sorry, nothing. Oh, so you want to know how are Danny's Rice Krispies? At a protest, I didn't even eat them. Wow. You know what happened? I'll tell I you. I bet what they it, sucked. I'll tell you what happened. <laughs> what? I'm going to tell you, Danny, uh, you know, Danny thought I'm going to keep these. And I know why Danny wouldn't give them to us. Because, he made like three of them. Because there were plenty of them. And there was plenty of food. But Danny wanted people to go, oh, look at how cute your Rice Krispie treats are. Oh. And you know what happened? Oh. Somebody made cuter Rice Krispie treats okay. better than Danny's. Did they? Oh, they did. They had pumpkin ones. Yeah. They actually made little pumpkin, full pumpkin With ones. With the Reese, little, the little Reese cups as the stems. Yeah. And so uh, Iris, Alyssa, who works over at the end, she did an amazing job. And I, she I, did a great job dressed as Dave Grohl. Yeah. Oh, I Beard and did. everything. Yeah. yeah. She yeah. did ruin them, though, because she put the little M&M as the little leaf, and it was a mint M&M, and it tasted terrible. Oh, look at so you. mine were better. Oh, no, no, that, look at this. Did that, did that just wow. happen? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Crispy yeah. treat shaming. Yep. Did shaming. that just happen? That's another co-worker yes. brings in free food and Danny just slams it like yep. this? See, Danny was envious. He was envious yep. that his mm-hmm. Rice Krispie, his, ba- his Rice Krispie treats were basic. I'm just saying. You're just looking yeah. like a jealous little bitch, Danny. Shut yeah, up. Yeah, you are. I'm just Well, saying. when isn't he? Right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's a good point. <laughs> yeah. Touche. Yeah. yeah. Hey. Oh, yeah. Hey, he's a jealous bitch. What are the little nutty buddies? Those are sweet. What? <laughs> the little ghosts, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that was just so random. I'm like, what? Yeah. PJ's done. <laughs> when Steve gets in that, it's just that sort of grunting, I like turtles. It's like, it's like that Steve is done. Did you try to know anybody go? I, I, I did, Steve. I didn't realize they had such an impact on your life. They, they were, were like, awesome. Yeah. Who made uh, those? They were great. Yeah, I'll find out for you. Probably not those two ladies that stole the donuts, but I'll find out. I don't know whoever made those freaking cupcakes, but holy smokes, they were amazing. Oh, yeah. You know who made those cupcakes? The QFC. Yeah. No. <laughs> but you know what was great? I watched her, and she said, I'm going to take this label off. People might think I really? did it. Yeah. And I thought, good call. Who was it? Uh, I, 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 she might not want to say her name. What if I dime her out now? And did people think that she's taking credit for something she didn't do? You should well, dime her out. All I'm saying is whoever it was picked the best cupcakes I've ever oh, had. Oh, then I'll tell you. Then it's, uh, it's, uh, it's can I see, should I say names? Probably shouldn't say names. Spell of, it. No one knows uh, how to spell. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind saying names of people who are on here. I don't know if I should say names of people who are off here. What I does it know. rime with? It rhymes with Riley. Okay. Oh, yeah. oh right on. Yeah. Nice work, Riley. Yeah, Riley. Rhymes with Riley did a great job. They were fantastic. Yeah, they were. And I watched the whole procedure. I was like, oh, I like how you're doing this. She took the label off and everything. She goes, I go, yeah, nobody will ever think this plastic packaging came from anywhere. They just probably think you have a lot of these at home because you're a great baker. That's probably what it is. That was a conversation with Vicky and I had the first thing this morning. I'm like, who made those? Right. Yeah. Oh, because did you not have you didn't have them live? Oh, they were in a they were in a plastic yeah, I box. Had them live, I lived it. Man. I mean, you didn't have them yesterday. <laughs> they were still in the plastic. Yeah, I had them. I was. I, I took one uh, on the way home. So as a why treat. did you think they were homemade? They were in a plastic thing. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> you can, I mean, there was no label on the plastic thing, so they could have just got that it from really a store. That really tricked you? I was joking with her when she took the label off that nobody will believe you made these. I and fully you thought someone made them. I thought she made them. Yep. I thought she could have. I've seen are... those same containers at, you know, like the, the oh, craft stores. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Fine, I'm done with both of you. So the guy that never cooks, shut up. 
Wow. Jeez. Wow. You know what? Everybody's hating today, Steve. Yeah, I got really angry sure all of a did. sudden. Danny you know Vicky why? both angry. Why? why? Because I got screwed. Yes, That's you why. Did. We're all in a bad mood yeah. because I didn't win. You should have won that contest. Also, those ladies should have been arrested. Yeah, I probably should have voted. A lot of badness went down yesterday, Steve. It, everyone should know. I won the pumpkin carving contest. You guys were giving me crap that I hadn't done until the last second, and I won. Nice. Yeah, that's a, that was the one bright spot for us. Is Vicky did win? Yeah, she represented. I can't believe the poop emoji pumpkin didn't even place. <laughs> they should have too. I thought it was the one of the best. You got screwed on every level. Yeah, I'm ending in my resignation letter today. I, you know, this what? is clearly not my company. Wait, did Chris yeah. place? I don't know. No, they knew. Everybody, ah. as soon as they showed his pumpkins on the screen, we were all like, cheater! Yeah, Sarah was yelling at everyone, don't vote for Chris, don't yeah. vote for Chris. He's a yeah. cheater, he's a cheater! Yeah, Chris Chris had no chance. <laughs> Good. <Yeah>. Awesome. Right. <laughs> Good, we're just, we're just so happy. Yeah, that's what happens when you have a sugar, when you have a sugar crash, everybody, day after Halloween. We're all just delightful. All right, here's a question for you. What to Ryan Castle and, yeah... Christmas music. We got to talk about it. Yeah. What do they have in common? I'll tell you at 948. BJ and Migs. Mornings on The Rock. 99.9 KISW. He's the drunk in charge. Now, the Ryan Castle question of the day. What's your Ryan Castle? And Christmas music, Kevin Count. I'll be filling the air downtown. Wow. Yeah, you will. Right. Smell it. <laughs> wow. That, uh, I think I'll pass. Thank you. Yeah. Both have included a donkey just got texted in. Okay. Yep. That's very, very, very true. Hey, DJ. There it is. Aww. It's Dominic and Dominic. And Ryan. How is it you do something one time and you become the guy that always does that? Yeah, I, I mean, look. Yeah, exactly. One, one right. small exactly. trip, a short trip south, and next thing you know. Exactly. Now you're the donkey guy. Hey, I got good news for some of us. I don't know our bad news. There's a psychologist in England who's been on a mission to get people to use some moderation with Christmas music. Because apparently it can be bad for your mental health if you go over it. Because of the fact it'll stress you out. When you hear that music and you think about all the stuff you got to do, the holidays, the families, the presents. And so if you keep hearing it over and over again, it keeps re-injuring you, re-stressing you. Uh, you don't got to do any of that stuff, Okay. by the way. You, sir, have developed a way to live life that a lot of us haven't. It's so liberating. Yeah. You, you mean you have a choice yeah. on whether or not to listen to Christmas yeah. music? Yeah. When was the last time you got a Christmas card from me? Mm. Yeah. See? I'm you're you're on my presents. Christmas card list. I don't have to worry yeah. about that stuff. <laughs> Brian Castle, he's not in the holiday spirit, but he still has a 12-pack. BJ and Miggs play of the day. Can you imagine if all of a sudden you're just driving on I-5 and you see me standing there buck naked yelling at cars? Yeah. I really don't want to imagine that. That would be awesome. Would you guys pull over and help me? No, I, well, I would take video. Okay, I appreciate and that. And you know who I call? Snapchat I, it. I call your favorite anchor because I know Steve Rabel would do a story about it. Thankfully, Miggs was okay. <laughs> but he's naked. He's naked screaming yelling at cars. But thankfully, Miggs was okay. Touchdown, Seahawks! Holy cow! Yeah, thankfully Miggs was okay. Yeah, that would be the story pretty much right there. DJ and Miggs, mornings on The Rock, 99.9 KISW. Today's podcast was brought to you by Travis Gagne, bankruptcy attorney. He's here right now and has agreed to answer more of your questions about bankruptcy. I have lots of tickets that I haven't paid. Can those be discharged through a bankruptcy? Yes, there are some limits on, on what we can do with tickets. Tickets cannot be discharged in a full bankruptcy in a Chapter 7 case. That won't help you get your license back. But in Chapter 13 reorganization, uh, tickets are dischargeable. Most types of tickets are dischargeable. So you would have to pay back some of the tickets in a Chapter 13 13 case, but the vast majority of them could be discharged if you complete the plan. And again, you would get your license back right away um, when you filed the Chapter 13 case, uh, as long as the only reason you don't have your license is because of failure to pay your tickets. But if the, but the Chapter 13 process will help you get your license back and repay a, a small portion of your tickets in most cases uh, and get your license reinstated almost immediately. Thanks, Travis. If you have more questions about bankruptcy, you can reach out to Travis anytime at choosetherightchapter.com. Innovation, resilience, agility. It's how Michigan businesses continue to work together to make a difference now and shape the future. Join us and make your mark where it matters. Visit michiganbusiness.org slash radio.